greetings, and thank you for taking a few moments with Blow the Scene readers from around the world. Uh, let's just take a moment and have you introduce yourself with Salt Lake City's purveyors of pro progressive crust, Gaza. <laughs> progressive crust, that was a little term. Uh, my name is John. I sing for Gaza, as you mentioned, from Salt Lake City. Um, it's good to be here. Awesome. Um, so how have the initial dates of the tour with Code Orange Kids and uh, Full of Hell treated you thus far? Actually, they've been really cool. Um, it's one of the better tours we've ever done. And uh, for being our first headlining tour, um, it's been, actually, it's been pretty incredible. We've surprised ourselves with the results of the so. Awesome. Very cool. So today, being November 23rd, we're here in Philly. It's the day after Thanksgiving. What'd you guys do uh, for Thanksgiving being on the road? Black Friday. Uh, <laughs> we actually, we didn't plan very well. What we wanted to do was uh, go see Lincoln, the new movie. And we went and saw that. Um, but as far as food was concerned, we, we decided to drive to Philly last night and got in about 9.30. And the closest Denny's to where we were staying was like 40 minutes away. And, uh, so we actually, we ended up finding a 7-Eleven and uh, we had 7-Eleven nachos for Thanksgiving. And that sad. I got you. Yeah. And was that with the other bands on tour? No, it was just us. Uh, Code Orange Kids, they, they went home. Uh, right on. They're near Pittsburgh here and then uh, we're close enough to Pittsburgh. And then uh, the... Uh, full of Hellcats went up to Connecticut. Uh, right on. Yeah, so. Cool. Um, yeah, it was kind of, I mean, it was the first Thanksgiving we've ever spent away from home. So it was a little weird to just kind of be sad by ourselves, but. I got you. All right, all right, a little 7-Eleven Thanksgiving on the road. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. It was kind of, kind of depressing, <laughs> but. I mean, Thanksgiving itself is, to me it's a hard holiday, because it, it, what we're thankful for is everything that we took and everything that we've prospered on since we took it. So it's really hard to um, uh, treat it without some sort of scrutiny. You know? Sure. So, yeah. Well said. Um, so we recently caught up with you for a full feature interview we did about a month ago. Um, and you had mentioned um, in that interview that it still surprises you, you know, that people come out to see Gaza when the band originally had the intention of clearing rooms, not filling them. Um, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> now that Gaza's reach uh, as a band is strengthening across um, extreme music circles around the world, like, and, uh, and in other words, you've got a very good buzz going. Are you starting to recalculate your goals as a band? Um, you know, we were actually just talking about that tonight about what's next and what what what's coming down the pipeline. And, um, when we first started out, you know, you you're so full of rage and. You don't have a lot of direction and you just are screaming and yelling about what you want to say and the music you're writing I mean, we, we, we kept it weird and we always tried to do something new and different with it uh, and we're the kind of guys that don't and won't settle for anything other than that so every record we write we really never want to take a step back um, we were talking today about what's next and we want the grind to be more grindy and the punk rock to be more punk rock and we want the heavy to be more heavy and the sad to be more sad and the lonely to be more lonely and uh, you know we just far, far too often I think heavy bands uh, slow down and they lose their edge and they lose their rage and uh, I don't ever want to be in that category I don't want to be part of that so if what we're doing is, is working um, you know we're going to keep on doing it I don't, I don't think that the amount of people that come to our show is going to really change what we're doing. Sure. Uh, I think it's a result of more people having heard us, that more people are being here. Uh, then the music has changed or softened, by any means, if that makes sense. I, I just think that um, we've been banging our heads against the wall for eight years and, and have rattled enough cages that, that some of those folks are remembering and coming back to shows. So. Right on. Very cool. Now, as far as like the types of shows or the types of tours that you want to play, or even like places that you want to go, um, have, you, have you guys started like you know recalculating that with the success of the record? I mean, are you satisfied with the success that? I mean, I, you know, it's from an from an onlooker's position. I mean, and just judging by the amount of buzz that the record's generated, it looks like it's doing well. I mean, would you agree with that assessment? I mean, is it as far as you guys are concerned? Concerned? Do you feel that the record is is done as you expected it to, or? Um, I think when we finished recording the record, we honestly felt like we did a home run with it. Like it was um, something that we all loved every bit of. There was nothing um, that we regretted or wished we had or hadn't done better. Um, 
we honestly walked away from it feeling like it was complete and, and um, the weird thing is we couldn't stop listening to it ourselves like, right uh, it was something that you know after, after you record songs and you've gone over them a hundred million times and you go through the mixing process and stuff at some point you get tired of it you know you just get tired of hearing it and right every time we throw this thing on we're just like wow you know like we really are proud of it and uh um you know we just we made decibels top 40 records this year and i don't know that a band like ours really has any place on a list like that uh but we're there and that was uh, shocking and I mean, we've had opportunities to go to Europe, and we've done a lot of U.S. touring, and we've had bands that we never thought would ask us to tour with them. Like, I mean, Corrosion of Conformity, uh, like, you know, right. a band like that, uh, having heard of us and, and being interested enough in us to take, to take us out on the road. I, right, I and Reed had really good things to say about you guys when we interviewed him, too, when they were in Philly. Yeah, and I just, I don't, I mean, stuff like that is really, it's still surprising. Um, you know, we... We have a lot to say, and we feel like we want to say it to as many people as possible. Um, you know, so Japan would be something that we would love to do. Australia is still something we haven't done. Southeast Asia, South America. I mean, there's still a lot of places we can expand into. Um, you know, and, and even Europe. You know, we'll be back there in the springtime. You know, that'll be our third time over there. But um, I mean, as, as long as we can keep growing, we're going to keep keep saying what we got to say and keep playing what we got to play. So I know you had mentioned on our last, um, during our last converse, conversation regarding like fitting bills and Gauze's overall sound, um, and, and you had mentioned that you sit at a crossroads of several genres. On this tour in particular, it would appear that your peers are in a similar boat. Um, you have Code Orange kids who blend sludge and a lot of different su niche subgenres and full of hell. Um, now. Uh, I would consider like these bands, Gaza, Code Orange Kids, even like Converge, Trap Them, kind of part of a renaissance in like the hardcore community, metal community, where it's just, there's not really a term for it, um, where it's a kind of just a blending of these niche genres. Do you get a sense that like the hardcore community is kind of at the beginning of another like shift or renaissance, for lack of a better term? Uh, I would if we weren't always so far on the outside of the hardcore world. I mean, we. We did a tour with the Acacia Strain and Terror, right? And, and it didn't. We had a blast doing it, but I mean, as far as like quote unquote hardcore kids are concerned, right, right, they don't have a lot of appeal. So, I mean, the genre that we play. I mean, I, I kind of feel like this is, for lack of a better term, the underground. Like this is this is what grind was a few years ago, right? Um, and I think that you're seeing a lot of. Uh, people bringing the genres together that they grew up listening to uh, and kind of uh, taking the, the parts uh, that were interesting um, growing up and kind of putting those together now in, in, in our own way. Um, but to me, I, 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 there, there's got to be something to music and there has to be something to hardcore for me to, to find its appeal. Like, I don't generally listen to a lot of quote-unquote hardcore bands, the stuff I listen to would be like Coalesce or, or something on the outside. Right. You know, something that, that is strange and different and, um, you know, a little bit more expressive than, than just your kind of standard tough guy stuff. Sure, um, sure. So that, that's a hard question to ask. Um, I think this tour is doing well because it, uh, I mean, the, the Code Orange kids, they, they do a really good job, like you said, Sludge. I, I, I think they're a bit of a grunge band in a weird way. Too. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely um, see that. And, the dirtiness of that, uh, and then you know the the full of hell guys, they're blending you know black metal and noise and grind. Right. Um, you know I, I just think that it's a tour where the overall emotion is what is is the unifying factor. Right. Not so much the style of music. It's really sure. the feeling of the bands that, that have more to do with it. And and maybe that's it. Maybe you maybe you're touching on something where emotion is coming back. In yeah, because I use hardcore kind of in a in a very general sense of the term. But it would seem that like you know you have like metal and like D beat and crust and just all these different genres that are kind of melding in a way yeah. that you didn't really see in the past. And you see more of the. I mean, at least for me, I'm noticing that the shows kind of have more of that sense of immediacy anymore where you're seeing like punks, you're seeing hardcore kids, you're seeing metalheads, you're seeing guys that are into grind kind of all starting to come to these shows for bands that don't necessarily fit any one of those, right. those genres. Right, and that's, and that's a good thing too. I just, um, I think the overall, I mean, the more important thing is that these bands carry with them uh, a range of emotions, you know, like, um, 
I mean, music to me, if it doesn't have any emotion to it, or if it's only one constant, like if it's just, I don't know, tough guy anger the whole time, you know, I'm, I'm, I love it for about three or four songs and then I'm done. Like, right. I, I don't, I'm, time to move on to the next thing, so. But to me, these, these bands are all, in a strange way, uh, more emotional than your average um, hardcore band. And so, I think that, that that honestly is a common thread there, so. Right on, cool. Um, so now to kind of shift gears into a little more uh, kind of political theme here. Now, obviously, with, with the band name being Gaza, um, mm -hmm. I would assume that you guys, and you know, judging on what you said prior, um, you guys do pay attention to politics. Obviously, it's a it's something you pay close attention to. Like, what is your what is your take on the situation that's happening like right now in Gaza? And like, as you as a band, like, where do you see your role? And I guess that whole and the political commentary that surrounds that situation. Yeah, you know, um, we've been hit up quite a bit in, in Gaza. You know, it's like it's trending on Twitter and it's trending on Facebook and stuff. Like right. That. Um, you know, a lot of people are looking to us for a stance, and they're looking to us for an opinion on it. And really, I mean, we picked the band name because it was an, an enduring example of how far people are willing to make each other suffer for their religion. And, and you can't you can't pick a side in a conflict where you know one side might be blowing up a bus full of innocent civilians, and the other side is shutting off water and electricity to you know an entire population both of those things and both when you're catching a citizenry up in a military conflict um, there's no excuse for either side and to us it really is just it's just furthering the example of how ridiculous and how much suffering people are willing to to, to cause for you know the myth that they will not let go of um, and it becomes this God is on my side mentality. And I, you know, the whole reason we picked the name was to, to demonstrate that, to demonstrate the extreme end of what religion can do to, to human beings. Um, and so there is no, there's no side. We're not, we're not picking a side with the name. We're not, we're not trying to uh, spearhead a solution either. It's just, it's a cesspool and it always will be until people can get past this ancient myth. Both are ancient, all three of the ancient myths that converge on this one holy world. Um, there won't be a solution until we can move past that. So that's the whole reason we picked the name. We didn't we didn't pick it to choose a side or to pick a struggle. It was, it was right. to demonstrate just the unreasonableness and the disgusting human element behind religion. Sure. Now, do you guys choose to leave it as more of as commentary as rather a means to action or a next step? Like, do you do you choose to leave it more as an art form than as a means to say like direct action or things like that? I mean, is that something that you even consider? We we hope to bring people to reason, and we hope to bring people to logic, and we hope to bring people away from um, you know to be able to call religion phony without having to worry about you know for, for whatever reason religion always gets this like oh you, you can't you can't knock on someone's religion because it's their you know it's their personal philosophy and it's, it's holy so leave it alone and I mean to me it's okay to call it ridiculous because it is and uh, that's that's really where we're coming from you know we get asked you know would you eliminate religion would you burn the churches if you could and no I mean you can't answer violence with violence I my my problem is when it starts to infiltrate society and when, when religious rules and laws become a ban for gay marriage or a way to oppress women's rights or uh, means for racism um, uh, when when abortion the only reason you know reproductive rights are, are an issue anywhere is because of religion um, you know so when it begins to reach its outside of its own walls, you know, outside of the synagogues, outside of the, mo the, the mosques, outside of the cathedrals, uh, that's when it, that's when we've got a problem, that's when we take a stance against it, because it, it isn't, it doesn't make sense for the rest of us, and it, it certainly isn't fair, um, you know, for, for somebody that doesn't subscribe to the, uh, the fairy tale. 
Well said. Wrapping up November here, 2012, what does Gaza have on the slate as we head into 2013? Um, we're going to go home and write a little bit. We have a couple of months off. Um, and then uh, we're going to Europe in the springtime, uh, early spring. Um, we can't really say who with yet because it hasn't been solidified uh, all the way, but the plans are in place and everything's rolling there. And then uh, we'll be down at South by Southwest and doing some touring to and from that as well. Okay. Um, so lots of stuff coming up in the spring on the new record. Um, like I said, we'll be writing and hopefully recording soon. We'd like to put out an EP in the summertime um, and then do a lot more touring through the summertime. So Cool. Righteous. Both U.S. and, and European as well. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you for once again taking some time with Blow the Scene readers from around the world. We really appreciate your time, and we definitely look forward to keeping up with your future endeavors with Gaza. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.